This is a Sega Dreamcast with a GDMU that was previously featured on this channel back in 2021. It had some problems with corrosion building up on the power supply socket and pins, and when you turn it on, it would boot with a really corrupt BIOS that sounded kind of haunted. The only way to get it working at all was to unplug the system, plug it back in, and then it would run for a couple minutes at a time, and then inevitably freeze somewhere mid-game. We were able to fix it by cleaning the pins that the power supply connects to, but it looks like just in the past week or two it started acting up again. This time, I have another fix that I want to try, and that's what this video will be dedicated to. Here's the GDMU. I have not taken it apart since 2021. Okay. Screws are out. Let's take the lid off. This still has its original uh, fuse and its original caps. I do happen to have the replacement for that. If someone wants me to make a video, I'll do it, but I'll save that for another time. Let's undo the power supply. There's two screws here. All the screws that we need to take out are out. I don't really feel the need to take the GDMU out. Always be careful when you're handling a power supply with exposed points and coils. There's a little latch here that's holding it in, so let's pull that back and then just wiggle from the motherboard. And now it's out. So here are the pins that the power supply sockets onto. And it does look like a little bit of buildup and wear mainly from the power supply sliding on and scraping against the surface of each pin did cause it to wear down a little bit, lost some of its coat. The front side of the pins look pretty clean from the left side of the console and from the front side of the console, pins look reasonably clean from the right side of the console and from the back side, looks a little suspicious. For cleaning this, I'd recommend using something like a toothpick. It's just an old machine shop trick. If you use a weaker material, like wood, against aluminum, you won't risk uh, scraping it and damaging it so much. But if I were to take something like this uh, steel to it, that could scrape it and cause some problems that interfere with the conductivity. I have some 70% rubbing alcohol in this cap. And what I'm going to do is just try to scrape to a point. You can kind of see the marks where the power supply sits. And right where it sits, that's where it's making contact. And that's most likely where some kind of moisture led to just a little bit of corrosion. And that tiny bit of corrosion is causing us the trouble here. I live on the east coast of the United States, where there is a high degree of humidity that accelerates rust and corrosion. In the case of the Dreamcast, the big aluminum pins sticking out from the motherboard have a lot of surface area that is exposed to air and therefore humidity and moisture at all times, slowly building up corrosion until it becomes a legitimate problem that prevents the motherboard from getting the appropriate power it needs. There's like a little bit of grime. There's barely anything on the tip. Just as Molex plugs and battery terminals build up corrosion, a fix is dielectric grease. Putting a coating of dielectric grease over the surface area might be the trick. It's an easy, old-school fix. So the discoloration is still just as 
evident. There's not really a whole lot I can do for that without, um, I suppose, electroplating. Probably the best way to get that fixed. You can see some shine on the pins again. Let's turn our attention to the power supply itself. I'm going to use a toothpick again. Got to be really careful when you're working with an exposed power supply like this. This is by far the most dangerous component on the board. You don't want to get yourself shocked. So I'm pushing it in just a little bit. I don't want to go too hard on that because these do have some degree of spring to them. The toothpick is just a little bit thicker than the pins. So if I push in too much, it might kind of ruin its elasticity. Certainly don't want to do that. There's a lot of rust on some of these metal surfaces here. Whereas the uh, motherboard pins on the Dreamcast, they look like they use aluminum. I might be wrong about the specific metals used on each. Steel tends to build up a, a brown rust like so. And aluminum tends to build up more of a, uh, a white, powderish looking corrosion. Different properties for different metals. Now let's turn it upside down. Do the same thing again from the opposite side. Notice here, everything is marked. So you've got 12 volt, 5 volt, 3 volt, and then all these three are ground. And if any one of those things is not making proper contact, it's not going to be a good day. I'd say that's about as good as it's going to get. Now our pins and our socket are about as clean as they're going to be. We're going to use some dielectric grease. It's cheap. It's commonly available. You can get it at basically any hardware store. It's really important in automotive electronics because they're exposed to the elements a lot more. So corrosion and rust accelerate a lot faster. And with this being somewhat of a Molex socket here, and with all the pins being pretty isolated from each other. I think this would be a good candidate for an experiment with this kind of grease. I'm going to put a coating of electric grease on all of the pins. Perhaps that coating will help to protect the pins from building up corrosion and being exposed to the air. It should also help to lubricate the socket. So that way when we slide it on, it should slide on with a lot more ease. I am going to just squeeze a tiny bit. You don't really need a crazy amount. Just a little bit more. Now it's on there, so let's guide everything back to its home. That did slide on a lot easier, a lot easier than it did before. I didn't put on a whole lot of that grease and I tried to keep it to the top of the pins so that way when I slid the power supply back on, the contact that would make would help to kind of force it and spread it across the surface evenly. Avoids a big mess, and gives the pins just the amount of protection and lubrication they need to avoid building up more corrosion. All back together now. Let's hook it up and see if it works. Okay, so the Dreamcast is hooked up. It's ready to go. Just to get good video quality on the CRT here, I'm going to turn the light off and then turn the Dreamcast on. The light's off, the Dreamcast is plugged in. Let's turn it on and see if it works.